G'day. Hello there. I'm Ozzy Robbo. I'm English Gent. Join us for a new adventure in Florida as we head off from London Heathrow with Virgin Atlantic and for the first time we're upgrading to premium economy. Uh, we'll be staying at Disney's Pop Century Resort and later in the holiday maybe somewhere else. We've got a few Halloween horrors and Halloween delights, a dream day out and an unplanned extended trip. Come see how it starts after the intro. So it's 7.40 in the morning. We've got a 10.40 flight and we're going to be going with Virgin Atlantic again. This time though we're doing premium economy so we're interested to see how that goes. We got that with points. We'll go into the more of that later. Uh, but yeah, what about the hotel? How did you find it? Yeah, I mean it's a really nice room. The same room we had a year ago. But it's um, yeah, very nice. I'm very impressed with the hotel. Uh, the food was very nice, nice last night. Uh, great bar experience. Yeah, the, the pillows are very soft. Very uh, soft, yeah. Uh, so if you're into it, like your firm pillow, you may want to bring one with you because I didn't. There's no alternative one here, like you do some places. Uh, the bathroom was really, really good. Temperature room, excellent. Yeah, the shower was really nice. Yeah, we're not doing breakfast here. We're going to basically we haven't pre-booked breakfast either in the terminal, so we're going to be heading and hoping to find a best option, I guess. Yeah. So uh, we'll discover if there's uh, many options this morning. How busy it is. Yeah. So catch catch us shortly when we're going to be checking in to Virgin Atlantic. So it is 7.40, it's basically taking us 10 minutes to get from the hotel to the Virgin check-in desk. Now we've got all our passes, we're already checked in, so we're going to do is basically drop off, so fingers crossed that goes quickly. So we're through security, it wasn't too bad, it was more, the security were great, it was more the people who were in front of us. Yeah, it only took us 10 minutes to get from the hotel to the Virgin check-in. The Virgin check-in guy, he wasn't the happiest this morning. Who is? But I will say, um, I always make use of the pre-check-in because the queues for the pre-check-in, the check-in sort of section where you get the consoles was really bad and it held everybody else up. We got premium, so we went st literally straight in, round the whirly whirlies, and then yeah, meeting the lovely uh, Virgin yeah. Atlantic rep. Yeah, most of the other ones seemed happy, but uh, ours wasn't the uh, most pleasant. <laughs> then we uh, then we went through the security, so. The liquids part was a bit of a chaos. There was people all over the place and people taking out stuff. And I guess some people had carry-ons with all their liquids in, but it, it was it was kind of chaos around there. Going through the actual security bit was fairly fast. Yeah. The time now is 10 past eight. So literally we left the hotel room. We left the hotel room at 20 past seven and it is now 10 past eight. So what is that, 40 minutes, 50, 50, 50 minutes, minutes yeah. yeah. To get through check-in and security, which is not bad considering what we've been reading online about uh, people's experience going through security at the moment. So yeah, that's not too bad. Uh, so now let's head on to the departures and merch and shopping and I want to do some smellies. Well, I've got that. Yeah, I've got that. This one's quite nice. I like the, um, it's like a robot in Dior sunglasses. It's like a lightsaber perfume. Oh, well, no one's doing it that way. Name of this one? What? what do you think the name of that one is? No idea. Bad boy. <laughs> is it? Special. You think it'd be like lightning or bolt? Bad boy. Bad boy pop fan. Bad boy cobalt. Bad boy. Well, these ones are very good. Good girl and good girl supreme. So you've got yeah. Good girl and bad boy. <laughs> Apparently, men are represented with a lightning bolt. First, I like the stilly. What, what, does, what does he want? What, what do the hands want? Um, pirate? Oh yeah, okay. What happens? No, nothing happens if you press the button. Thank you. That's me. Vision in lemon yellow. <laughs> no, that's definitely me. Just missing the side eye. Uh, do you want anything for the flight? Not from here. So we have just walked through that little bit of section of duty free where it feels like it's like the market stalls trying to get you first before you get into the real duty free where it's all kind of crowded in. Yeah. You know that feeling where it's all there right as soon as you get out of the security. Yeah, it's a bit, I always find it a bit much sometimes, especially when it's busy. It's a bit strange the way it all curves around as well. I don't like the organization of it very much. 
Um, but we're going to try and find some food first and then maybe do a little bit more looking around for the shops once we've uh, had something to eat. So actually that wasn't as painless, it's very busy, it wasn't as painless as we thought it was going to be. Uh, about 10 minute wait for a queue for the, where we are as the curator, which we've never been to, we've heard of it but we've never been to. Um, quite a nice range um, on the menu, uh, lots of different sort of breakfast plates, but also all day sort of things. Um, lots of sides options as well and a pool bar. So what am I having? I'm going to go for the Eggs Royale, so that's a basically um, Eggs Benedict with salmon. Um, which I absolutely adore and I haven't had for ages, so I'm really looking forward to that. And I've ordered the omelette with ham and cheese and comes with potatoes on the side and a cheeky little Bloody Mary with that as well. Cheeky. Cheeky little Bloody Mary. Yes. It's going to get smashed before it gets in the plane. <laughs> so how was breakfast, Darren? Um, yeah, all right. Uh, quick service, good service. Um, it was around nine pounds something for mine, I think, or was it ten pounds something? Yeah, all well, the mains around ten pounds. Ten pounds something there. I think if you've got an all-day breakfast type thing, like a big whopper thing, that was about fourteen pounds. Yeah, it was nice. I'd give it um, major oil. I'd give it uh, three and a half Kenobis. Coffee was nice as well. Very smooth. Yeah. So um, I thought the breakfast was fine actually. Uh, it wasn't amazing. There wasn't a huge amount of flavour going on there. It was just a, it was a standard omelette with um, potatoes that were fine, crispy potatoes. I would say three shrimps on a barbie. I mean, it wasn't bad. It just wasn't something I would ever want to go back for again. And um, the uh, Bloody Mary was fine. It was okay. There wasn't a huge amount of flavour that distinguished it from anything else. So again, like, three shrimps on a barbie. But you do like your Bloody Marys, so... Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm obviously trying to get them in different places and trying to get some variety going on there. Something I'm really looking forward to in Florida is that I'd love to get a Bloody Mary served with some bacon. I don't know if there's going to be extra flavour going in and there in the back from the bacon, but I've, I've seen Bloody Marys served with bacon, and that's my uh, holiday goals at the moment. Maybe it's the hangar in Disney Springs will drive for that, because they seem to have Bloody Marys and bacon, so fingers crossed they cross the two. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but it's, 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 a fine, it's a fine option for breakfast. The lines seem to be getting longer as we were there. Yeah. Um, the food arrived the food arrived before the drinks but that was it wasn't a huge drama we just kind of got on with it um, but yeah it's a fine place to eat I walked around and showed some footage hopefully the sound came through so I walked around and got, showed some footage the Pret you, it was literally walk in and pay straight away there was another place uh, Spatino or something I can't remember what it was called that had a bit of a wait so in terms of places to eat there is a Pret and uh, it doesn't seem too busy but this one has had a line all morning to get into all day breakfast, coffees and shakes. Spatino? Spantino? There was longer the wait than the, the place we went to, and also there was Wagamama's, which didn't have a queue at all. So um, we have had breakfast at Wagamama's before, and that was quite nice. I didn't know they had Wagamama's. Oh my god. The Wagamama's was next like to prep. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, so breakfast done. Right, so for maximum coverage, we've decided to split up. Um, I'm going to start at Glorious Britain, where I can imagine what's going to be. Oh, yeah. Double decker buses, Busby's, maps, pictures of London, and of course, wouldn't be a British themed store without biscuits, no doubt, shortbread. Some nice trays. I like the, um, excuse the child, um, I like the Austin Power style Jag. And we've got football represented. We've got Rob's favourite team from his hometown where. He used to live and where his parents came from liverpool arsenal not allowed to buy any mugs on this trip i promise i won't can't decide if these are cute or hideous i think i prefer the irish one we've got of course cadbury's represented so for all of our american friends I'm sure most of them know that Cadbury's is the more superior chocolate. There are some chocolates we like over in the US, but a lot of them tend to be very waxy. Can't beat dairy milk. Uh, something that the Broadway's away, uh, friends of ours. Um, no doubt Pete would hit this, even though he wasn't buying, you just have to look at them. It's Lego. Wow, that is a big bag. That is huge. That's American sized. Now I actually like 
One of the few chocolate things I do like is the um, the Hershey's Kisses. Never tried the cookies and cream one though. I've tried the bars, but I've never tried the actual kisses. Fourteen ninety-five though. Oh. Um, yeah, so we're back to perfumes. Uh, I've been after one in particular, but they never seem to sell it here, which is there's a Abercrombie and Fitch. And sadly, they don't seem to ever stock that here. And it's always full price in Abercrombie and Fitch, so I tend to not want to get it. It's quite pricey. Um, yeah, it's definitely more open this visit than there was last visit, and it's definitely more busy than it was in back in February. If you want to check out our February vlog, uh, that's where we actually uh, pre-booked our breakfast to have a lounge access. So our flight is should be boarding at about 9.40. It's currently in, just going to quarter past nine. And they announced the gate at 9.40. Interesting. Duty-free shopping was not as good as I expected it to be. I think I had visions in my head of Gatwick, which now seems really good. But at the time I was a bit disappointed by, but then we came here and I'm disappointed by this. Yeah. I feel like Gatwick's is a lot, lot better in terms of layout. Yeah, I would say so. Here there's like two kind of corridors going up for the duty free. And it didn't seem very big. It's a bit I, wasn't, I wasn't impressed considering it was Heathrow. No. The layout in here seems a bit strange. It's like two kind of corridors of shopping. I remember it being different last time. Maybe there's a whole different section that I can't find and I've not looked for yet. Maybe there's a different terminal with better duty-free shopping that we haven't been to. More than like, so we always go from... Because I feel like I've, I've flown from he uh, Heathrow in the past years ago and it was way better. But um, yeah, I wasn't too impressed by the duty-free shopping. So as you saw, I had a little bit of a jig around the duty-free. Um, I was going to buy some sunglasses, but they didn't have them in polarised lenses. So we're in the sunglasses uh, area now. And I swear I'm being followed by a really loud child. Um, anyway, let's try on some glasses. There's actually some glasses I like um, from Oakley. Let's have a look. What do we think? I actually quite like those. I don't know where go for mirrored sunglasses. They're actually quite nice. Yeah. Okay. Will I buy myself some? I might treat myself. As I say on Parks and Rec, treat yourself. So it's 97.50. I wear prescription lenses though, so I, don't know. I could always get them changed at a later date. But I often sort of wear glasses without my lenses in just to give my eyes a bit of a rest. And I, the prescription thing, I, didn't, I usually have prescription lenses. They were actually all right, but I, yeah, not worth like 20 quid off. Um, I'd rather check out stateside and see if there's anything in Disney Springs even. Um, but yeah, some nice choices. But again, like Rob was saying, Gatwick, I feel like, has a better range of shops and better layout. But we haven't been since 2019, so who knows what it's like there at the moment. If, you, if you've got experience in the last year of Gatwick, let us know down in the comments below. So we'd like to know what your experience was like at Gatwick for their duty-free and their stores and food uh, sort of options. So here we are, we've actually got on the flight and um, that's probably the smoothest check-in and arrival we've ever had. So uh, we got called the second time. So first of all, it was upper class and then it was ourselves and went straight through no issue whatsoever really lovely um, got into the cabin we are in seat 25 k and h um, so i've taken the window for the moment rob's got the aisle seat and there's nobody else next to us which is quite nice um, straight away as soon as we got settled and seated and um, we've had uh, the option of fresh orange juice water or prosecco so first impressions of the premium, this is our first time in premium um, sort of class and very impressed. Um, straight away, uh, lots of room to sort of yeah, spread was, out in um, regards to getting on and getting your bag sorted, taking your bits and bobs out before you sit down. Um, actually room for us to stand, which I'm just around six foot, Rob six foot four. Um, right. And yeah, it's been pretty good. And all. Uh, Rachel, who's looking after us with the drinks this morning, was very lovely. Rob was on a phone call, so she was very courteous and okay. sort of made sure not to bother him while he was on the phone. Really good. So while Darren was doing the chat to you, 
I was trying to sort out my card, my um, prepaid post office card for currency was not working. So uh, I was on the phone to my bank while Darren was doing that recording. So now I'm finally able to enjoy my drink. So I was a little dubious about exactly how much leg room you'd get, especially me being a six foot two man. I thought I'm going to be crammed in either way. So normally when we book these flights, we are in economy, but we go to the front where we're by the exits. So you get loads more room. And when we came and sat on, down on the plane when we first got on, it felt like a lot more crammed than when you actually sit down. Once you sit down, there's tons of room, tons of leg room. So you've got that much distance. And yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm actually really surprised by how much leg room we've got. So I'm actually quite happy with that. That's a definite uh, tick on that one, as far as the premium economy goes. Right. What about storage? Storage actually does feel like it's a bit bigger. Basically, you've got just yours. So it. just talking about the overall uh, ambiance of the, uh, of the seat area. So yeah, baggage feels like it's more room. The screen feels a lot better to use. So I've been watching a TV show, you've been watching a film, but the touch ability of this compared to what our last flight was, on the last one you had to touch it loads of times to get some sort of sense of reaction going on. Yeah. Whether this is a newer plane or not, how old is this plane? I, I don't, I'm not sure. We don't know how old the plane is, but either way, you can actually use the screen, whereas you know in the economy, the screen was really hard to use, so it's also very impressive. A lot of uh, range of uh, films going on there. What are you watching? I am watching Curb Your Enthusiasm. I've always wanted to watch this. I always used to like Seinfeld. So I've always wanted to watch it, I've never got around to it. Yeah, I've never got around to it. This is like season five, so it's well into the seasons. Um, but yeah, watching a bit of Curb Your Enthusiasm. And we're waiting for dinner to come around, so they're about to serve dinner. So I'm watching a film that I actually missed recently at the cinema. It's not long been out. Um, it's called Phantom of the Open, and it's based on a true story um, about an Englishman who basically just took up golf after watching uh, the open tournament. Uh, um, golf's not really my thing, but it's really, really sweet. Uh, starts at Barrett in finesse. Very British, but really charming. I'm only about 10 minutes in, and I'm already hooked, so I'll let you know how the film goes. For starter, we've had Mediterranean antipasto plate with pomegranate and tibar, uh, chickpea hummus, zesty lemon olive, and sun dried tomato. Notice that it is zesty lemon olive and not olives. <laughs> <laughs> so it is, it's a giant olive. Um, and that's served with a rustic ciabatta roll and butter. What did you go for? I went for the salmon that comes, what was it coming? So uh, the, when we did the check-in, we also had the opportunity to pre-select our meals. And you also, in fact, no, I think it's a couple of days before. And then I changed my mind, so I ended up changing it to a different thing. So Yeah, that salmon is really nice. There's a really nice flavour in the uh, sauce. And the salmon... It's cooked really well. Yeah, no, that's that's uh, definitely that's a fantastic meal right there. Quite nice and tomatoey and flavourful. Right. The pasta's nice and warm. Plenty of topping like cheese sauce on top. Right. Um, yeah. Um, I haven't tried the peas and veg yet, but get to that. So event. obviously, you know, the website tries to make out that this food is a lot nicer, and I, I was um, cautious about uh, how good this food would be, but actually, I was very impressed. Obviously, it's a very small portions because you know we're on a, on a plane and they don't serve you know large portions anywhere. But the starter was really nice. Um, very small but very nice so I would give that four four shrimps on a barbie easily the main obviously it's jam packed into a little bowl but the flavours were great I would give that four and a half shrimps on a barbie 
One thing I will say is I, I'd already read before, long before we did this flight, that airline being in a being in a plane reduces your taste buds. Without a few people watching previous ones saying the same. People have said it. I've read it before anyway, even before they said it. But you know what? I got loads of flavour from all those meals. I didn't get loads of flavour when we were on the economy last time. So as much as you can say being in a plane reduces your taste bud flavours, um, I they were certainly alive and kicking then when I, I was eating that meal. And uh, the dessert, it's very nice. It wasn't like overpowering, so it was just like a nice kind of sweet flavour. It was a very light dessert. So yeah, again, uh, four shrimps and a barbie. But overall, definitely a huge step up from uh, the normal economy meals that we're used to uh, on a regular basis that we've had when we flown. So we've just under two hours left till we land at uh, Orlando MCO. Um, we've got high tea. Um, I've actually been looking forward to this because A, I like scones, scones, scones. Uh, but also I was looking forward to having like the whole sort of on crockery experience. And yeah, they're not sort of um, held back. So we've got the duo of finger sandwiches, which is mozzarella, tomato and pesto on brown bread and then cream cheese and dill on white bread. Uh, there's a mini patisserie, which is chocolate and raspberry milfoy and almond franizia. And then warm scone, uh, which is clotted cream and strawberry jam. Um, and I think they're vegan or, no, ovo lacto vegetarian um, for the dairy. Yeah, so that's, yeah, I'm looking forward to this. Oh yeah, so for a drink, um, I decided to have a cup of tea, uh, probably the last cup of tea you have before we get to the US, in fact I probably won't have a cup of tea in the US, but yeah, it comes in like a nice, sorry I'm not rotating enough, it comes in a nice uh, sort of mug. Um, I don't think I've ever seen whiter bread than what I've got in front of me right now. <laughs> Ghost white. I've spotted a big problem. I've got a big issue with this. This is not going down well. Let's have a look at the evidence. This is Rob's finger sandwich. This is mine. Notice any difference at all? <laughs> any difference whatsoever? <laughs> so you gave the bigger one to the quality first? Apparently. Apparently so. <laughs> I feel a bit wounded. What are you doing now? Nothing. They look like skin tags. <laughs> Don't like them. He's a child who removes his sultanas. So after the big debate of the last flight, Darren can't even remember which one he normally puts on first. He obviously wasn't that devoted to his cause. I don't drink tea as often as I used to, but when I have it with things like pastries, it's just the best. It's perfect. That was really nice. I would give it four Kenobis overall. Yeah, tasty. Different flavours. What? Tasty of different flavours. You had the chocolates, you had the lemon, you had your cotton cream, your jam. Yeah, it's nice. My evaluation of the food for afternoon tea. Um, I actually really enjoyed it. Uh, the sandwiches are very small, but very tasty. Very, very tasty. And uh, the scone was very nice. Very nice with the jam and cream. I wasn't a huge fan of the cakes. Um, very sweet flavours going on. Uh, quite dense. But um, overall, <laughs> but overall, I'd give those um, a solid four shrimps on a barbie. Yes, very nice for afternoon tea. So we checked into the hotel and we're in the room but we've done a big jump from getting off the plane and talking to getting in the room. So I'll just give you a bit of backstory, take you back to what was going on. So the flight landed an hour early, which was fantastic. I don't think we've ever had a flight that's landed early before. So uh, that's a bonus, huge bonus. We got in, uh, the heat kind of hit us as soon as we got off the plane. Then we uh, legged it to immigration. Now being in premium, we were one of the first ones off the plane. So that was really good. When we got to immigration, we were literally the fifth or sixth couple to go through and we got through really fast, literally 10 minutes from getting off the plane to 
waiting in front of the baggage carousel. And again, like last time, the baggage carousel was right behind the immigration, which I, I find really strange. It's literally right on the other side. You can see the other people coming through immigration as you're waiting for your baggage. All good. And then that was a bit of a wait there. So it was about a 20 minute wait before the baggage started moving. But we were one of the first ones to get our bags, which was fantastic. And then we just hit, hit the monorail and then went over to the main part. And our memory was pretty good from, we were only here seven months ago. So it was pretty fresh about where to go for the uh, Mears transport. So we got that pretty fast. We were the only ones waiting there, strangely. There was just the two of us. And when we got off the plane straight out, it was uh, sunny bright and sunny, nice and warm. And then by the time we got to the monorail crossing, it was bucking down with rain. Uh, almost like, it felt like a monsoon for us. It, it was just crazy. And the amount of thunder and lightning that was going on, wow. So um, yeah, so when we were waiting for the mirrors, it was still raining. It kept raining the whole time. Thunder going off every couple, uh, couple of seconds. And there was no one else waiting, strangely enough. We were the only ones there. So. After about 10, 15 minutes, the guy told us to go over to the taxi stand, took us over to the taxi stand. They gave us a voucher or something, and then we got in a taxi. So we had a taxi to ourselves, which was really nice. And then we got a taxi to the resort. What about the bags in the taxi? Because we had four suitcases. So three of them went in the, uh, the boot, and then one went in the front seat, and the alarm was going off at first. So he did have to put the seatbelt on for the, uh, the suitcase in the front seat. So happy that he thought it was another person? Yeah, I thought it was another person, basically. And then we got to the resort. The room hadn't showed up on the app for us to be able to check in. So even though, theoretically, you should be able to just go straight to your room, the room hadn't showed up. Darren went through. It turns out that his post office debit card, or the card we use when we're on holiday, hadn't registered for the room. So it didn't allow us to, to register for the room. So he did that, but you changed around the room that we were originally supposed to go to anyway, when we got a nicer room apparently, or in a, nice, in, in a nicer location basically, yeah. So uh, we got that, he gave us our Magic Band Plus as well, because we'd purchased those before we got here. He gave us those, and then we came over to the room and uh, check, uh, checked into the room. So here we are in the room and uh, just updated our Magic Band Plus. Darren's unpacking a little bit because uh, it's pissing down with rain still, but we're hoping it goes off because we're now going to try and get to Hollywood Studios. Uh, Although Genie Plus, Genie Plus is on our uh, thing as well, so we've got Genie Plus in place. The Skyliner doesn't seem to be moving at all, so we're going to have to get the uh, shuttle over, I guess. It doesn't change, yeah. Yes, so if you're coming from the UK, some of you may have booked already and you would have got the offer where you can include a discount, a heavily discounted price, the Genie Plus for every day of your trip. We decided to do it, even though we haven't had the best experience with Genie Plus uh, from our previous trip. You can see that um, in the link below for our previous trip. Um, but yeah, we haven't had the best look, so we, but we thought it's it's all part and parcel. But I did have concerns. I'd heard horror stories about it not being on people's apps when they arrived. Um, as soon as we checked in and we got into the room, by the time we got into the room, I looked at the app. It was letting me choose lightning uh, lanes. So we have booked a lightning lane for our tradition, which is uh, Tower of Terror. So we're going to be going on Tower of Terror sometime between half six and half seven tonight. And fingers crossed we can get a booking to go and have something to eat and drink, maybe in a particular land in a galaxy far, far away. Uh, but yeah, it's good to be back. Yeah, the weather's not great, but I'm just glad we're here. And we had a really great journey here, so. So we've just checked into the hotel, unpacked some of our stuff. Got a bus over to Hollywood Studios. It was pissing down with rain, but actually it's stopped now that we're at the park. Yeah, queues, because of the rain, a lot of people have left, so we've got really short queues. However, we've got the Genie Plus all set up for us, waiting to go. So we've got our, well, our tradition now, which if you're new to the channel, we have a tradition, first night of the park, we always go on Tower of Terror. And but we did last time. No, because we couldn't last time because it was closed. So it's not really a good tradition. So it's seven o'clock in the evening. Yeah, we'll do a couple of rides. I'm really hungry. Yeah, I guess we And do. I'm quite tired as well, because it's past midnight now, back in uh, the UK. But uh, yeah, let's go on Tower of Terror. So how was the uh, Tower of Terror? <laughs> yeah, it was good to get into a first ride. Uh, it was a bit more, it went a bit longer than what I remember. Yeah, random. I felt like it kept going to the top quite a lot on that ride. Yeah, we saw the outside. Yeah. About four or five times. Yeah. But good to get that first ride under the belt. 
some interesting uh, clientele here tonight. So it's, it's actually pretty quiet, but the ones who are here are quite vocal. Um, yeah, so, so screaming kids. Yeah, so we're not hanging around too long. Um, we're going to go and get some dinner. I think we're heading to Galaxy's Edge, as you may tell from the wall behind us, on this big wall, and no sort of pop music playing. But yeah, we're going to head to Docking Bay 7 and grab a Toronto wrap and a drink for the end of the evening. Yeah. I might hang around for a bit longer though. So. We just went to Docking Bay 7. How was your Toronto wrap? Mine was average. It wasn't the best one I've had. The chips were different ones again. They were pretty awful. They were pretty awful, actually. I was really disappointed in those. Because they were really good last time. Would you say they were worse than Walker's Crisps? Just kind of just standard, Bob standard. They were just tasteless, yeah. The Ronto wrap, was, I, I enjoyed the Ronto wrap. Um, sausage, was, sausage was great, the pork was fine for me. I really enjoyed that. I just, the chips were just pretty awful. Cool. We did the mobile order, had a bit of trouble with the card at the beginning, but it all got sorted eventually. Yeah, Disney are pushing the mobile order really hard now. Um, and that's just to the point where it's irritating, but uh, if you have problems with the app, just go up and tell them. They'll, they have to let you in, They're, they want your money, so. <laughs> Right, but that's the end of the travel day. Yeah, that's been a long one. Uh, we're going to head back now and get some sleep. We've got all our stuff put away. And thanks for joining us. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to like and subscribe. We'd love to see you back here next week. We've got quite a few adventures up ahead of us. There's a few uh, after hours spooky events. Uh, but thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye. Bye bye. So, in all the travel chaos, we actually forgot to record our evaluation of what we thought of the premium Virgin flight yesterday. So, while we're on the uh, Skyliner, we thought it'd be a good time to uh, just give a quick opinion of what we thought. And also, we're a bit more fresher today than we were yesterday when we were quite <laughs> exhausted by the end of traveling. I was actually pleasantly, pleasantly surprised about how good the premium seats were. So I think the only minor blemish on the whole flight was when we checked in and the attitude of the guy when we were checking in. But apart from that, everything was fantastic. Uh, the airline stewards, stewardesses, they were all really nice, really, really friendly, great service. Uh, there were a few other impatient people who were you know, expecting things very quickly, but we, we got everything fine. They were all really nice. Uh, the leg room, leg room was fantastic. As I mentioned on the plane, I'm six foot two and I felt there was plenty of space. I never felt confined in any way. The food was uh, 10 times better than anything we've had in economy so far. Loads of flavor. I mean, it's not, you know, it's not restaurant quality food, but it's, it definitely it certainly had some flavor there. And obviously they've got to pack it into a small little area. So uh, I couldn't complain about the food at all. The touch screen was really good, especially compared to the economy one we had last time, which didn't work at all really. This one, it was very sensitive, uh, moved around as much as you wanted. Uh, the sound was really good, very clear, very crisp. And the baggage. So the bags on the other side came out um, before everyone else's basically. And we embarked from the plane for um, the economy so we got to, to immigration really fast. So in terms of everything that they, uh, they advertised on the website for premium, I think they delivered. So I would definitely recommend it with points. I'll explain in a little bit uh, about how I got those points. Uh, but yeah, I had a really good trip. It went, flew by. Um, I used the, uh, the Vera system, which is the multimedia sort of entertainment system for the first time in a long time. And it was great. The picture was great, the sound was great. Uh, loads of options, loads of films and TV shows on there that I didn't realize they had. Um, I watched Phantom of the o Open and that was awesome. Really good British film really brilliant performances um, very very funny um, but yeah it's, it's kind of spoiled us now for the future flights so in regards to booking the flights and upgrading to premium we didn't actually pay for it as such uh, in terms of the full premium price we couldn't afford to so we did the upgrade now initially neither has had anywhere close to the amount of points that we needed for the upgrade so I did a bit of research into it, and this is the best way that I could find for us to be able to afford to use points to go towards a premium ticket. So first of all, I only had about 4,000 points in my account, but my previous flight in February, they didn't give me the points for the flight uh, that we took. So what I did is you can contact them, and if in the previous six months, 
they haven't given you those points, you can contact them by um, one of the links on the uh, webpage, and then they will reimburse you with those points on your frequent flyer miles. So I think I got about 4,000 points, which was less than I expected, but uh, I got 4,000 points towards my um, points that I already had, which was uh, I think about 4,000 or so. Darren had about 9,000 at this stage. So one way for me that I found to increase Darren's points was to use Tesco's points. Now Tesco's club card points can actually be used towards Virgin frequent flyer miles. I had actually been saving quite a lot of them uh, because we were going to use them for the uh, Eurostar to go to Disneyland Paris in the future, which you can do as well. But when I discovered that you could use them towards the Virgin frequent flyer miles, I decided to throw them all on there instead. And I, I can't remember, I think we got about maybe 10, 15,000 points, which still wasn't enough for Darren, because that left him at about 15,000. And at this time of the year, because the points differ at different times of the year, he needed 22,000, so did I. So the next thing I did was I took out a Virgin Atlantic credit card. Now, I don't suggest anyone take out a credit card just for the point of getting an upgrade. If you do and that works for you in the same way that's worked for us, that's good. But I, I suggest that no one getting credit uh, just to be able to upgrade on their flight. But initially you pay a fee of £160. And then with this, well, at the time that I did anyway. So at that time that I got that, I then received 15,000 points straight out on my account. Uh, which then took me up to close to, I think, I believe, around what we needed for 22,000. And then you also obviously get points for every uh, pound that you spend. I think it's a point and a half maybe, and then you get triple points, I believe, for memory, if you spend your card towards uh, Virgin products as well, Virgin, um, air, like flights or uh, packages. So, we also got another 15,000 points if in the first three months you spent a certain amount of money, then you got that bonus 15,000 points. So, uh, to wrap up this long rambling uh, explanation of how we got all these points, we both succeeded in getting 22,000 points, which meant that we could then upgrade with points. Now, without going into too much detail, trying to upgrade on the Virgin Club is really hard, especially once you've paid for your package deal or your flights it becomes a lot harder to change things. They don't like to uh, engage with the customers in that way. On the website, it makes it look like it's very easy to upgrade your flights, but in reality, you can't do it on the website. You have to do it by phone. And they only release the packages or the, 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 the seats for upgrades on the same time at certain parts of the year. So obviously on that day, everyone and the following days, everyone is trying to get through. So I couldn't get through for a couple of days and Darren ended up having to do it. They were very unhelpful initially, but we finally got the upgrade eventually. We did have to, I did have to pay hundred pounds for each of us, which I believe was towards the taxes for the upgrades. Now there are other ways of getting upgrades where you can bid for them. I believe there might be other, other ways that you can do it more successfully, but this was just the way that I found worked the best. So, I basically took out a Virgin Atlantic credit card, which got a lot of points for us extra, and I still have a lot of points now. And we also use a lot of our, or all of our Tesco club card points towards the Virgin frequent flyer miles, and that allowed us to then both upgrade and um, do the premium. We really, really enjoyed the premium flight out there. It was definitely worth the upgrade. It was a lot more comfortable on the way back as well but the service wasn't as great. You'll probably find that out in the final travel day video that we do. But uh, hopefully that uh, might give some of you out there a little bit of information in terms of trying to upgrade to premium economy without actually spending 1,700 or 2,000 um, pounds and doing it with points instead. Hey Darren, take it to the runway. Runway, run, 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 runway.